everyone, I'm Abigail, this is Claire, and welcome to another Two Kids interview. Today we are joined by author Laura Siegel-Stegman, who is currently writing her Summer of Luck trilogy. The first book oh. of Summer of Luck came out last year. The sequel, Ready or Not, comes out tomorrow, which I should mention that we read and really, really enjoyed. And the third book, we assume, comes out next year. First, congrats on book two coming out tomorrow. And thank you so much for being here with us. Well, thank you, Abigail and Claire. I'm just delighted to be here. And the third book, by the way, is called The Chambered Nautilus. And yes, it will be out next year. As we said, tomorrow is the book birthday for Ready or Not. Do you get nervous or excited with the release of the book? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I'm I'm a little, I mean, I'm not nervous about anything going wrong. I know everything will be fine. The book's already available for pre-sale and all that stuff. Um, I, You know, one of the things that I, I like about being an author is that people read my books and say nice things about it or or whatever they think about it. But I, I think I also, it's 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 hard to sort of be the center of attention too. So I have to kind of get myself geared up for that. And and um, and I, I just, what I do is I put myself in the place of some of my author friends when I see their books coming out and all the attention they get. And I just think, oh, that's so beautiful. It's people sharing their, their, their support and their delight in the books. And uh, it helps me when I do it that way. So where are you in the process of book three right now? Well, book three is actually completed. Um, I completed it when I when I signed with my publisher, which is Young Dragons Press. Um, they uh, uh, part of the contract was to to finish book three by last year. And uh, publishing is a very slow business. Um, you know, when 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 you sign with a publisher, the book doesn't just come out immediately. It takes a lot of time. And since then, I've been writing another book that's not in the series. It's a different book. It's a whole it's a whole different. Uh, character and plot and everything but um so i've been working very hard on that i'm almost finished with book four with with the fourth book i've written which is to me unbelievable right i mean writing one book writer (laughs) so at what point did you know this series would be a trilogy and would you consider writing a fourth you know when i first started writing summer of luck and that was many many years ago it took me a really long time to write the first book um because I had never written a book for, for I'd never written a book, period, but I had certainly never written a book for middle graders. And I'm a lot older, as you can probably tell, than you guys. And um, and when I was growing up, I read a lot of books, but books have changed. And I had to read a lot of middle grade books today, contemporary middle, middle grade books. And I had to learn, I, I was a writer uh, for my work. I do public relations and I wrote press releases and biographies and all kinds of you know, letters and and things like that, but I'd never written fiction. And so I really had to learn to write fiction and I had to write it for the age that I was writing it for. And so, um, but when I started, when I came up with this idea for Summer of Luck about these three kids who meet at the summer camp, yes, I did have a plan to sort of write a series of books. I didn't know how many I was going to write, but I thought it would be really awesome to write a series of books about these characters and their adventures at the summer camp. Um, So uh, when I finished the first book, I immediately started writing the second book, writing Ready or Not. And Ready or Not didn't take me as long. Summer of Luck took years. I don't even want to say how long. (laughs) It's like, like probably 20 years, not because I was writing on it all the time, but just like I said, I was really learning how to write and um, write fiction. And, And Ready or Not only took me about 12 or 13 months, which is a little over a year. And and The Chambered Nautilus, which is the third book, um, took a, about about a year, a little over a year. So I, I got better as I went along. But um, once I wrote The Chambered Nautilus, because each in each book, it's a year later. So Summer of Luck, Naz is 10, Darby's 11, Justin's 12. In Ready or Not, Naz is 11, Darby's 12, Justin's 13. And in The Chambered Nautilus, just bump it up one age. So Justin's 14 in that book and Darby's 13 and Naz is 12. Well, once, you know, once a, a, in, in middle grade literature, once a kid is older than that, it becomes young adult. And I I just, I'm not quite interested in writing for the young adult audience. I love middle grade books. I read them myself. Um, so anyway, to answer your question, I did, um, 
I did once I started Summer of Luck. I, I mean, uh, sorry, the Chamber of Nautilus. I knew that would be the the third in the trilogy, and uh, and I also, you know, with regard to Mister Usher, who's the the friendly ghost in all three books, um, you know, I wanted him to to have some closure to his story. So uh, you'll find that in 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 the Chamber of Nautilus. We know you are a Dodgers fan as is one of the characters in Ready or Not. How many other things from the book com- books come from your life? Well, I did I did notice your your remark about the Dodgers, uh, Abigail, and I also know where you, you know what what state you live in, so I have to assume you're you're a fan of <laughs> one of those two teams. But I I actually I'm a Yankees fan. I'm I'm from oh. I'm from New Jersey. Okay, well, good for you. I like the Yankees too. Yes, there is a lot in in both books that um, that comes from my own experience. Neither neither book tells my my story. I'm very different. I I I didn't ever meet a magical ghost, for example. But um, but I did have um, I didn't and I didn't stutter like Darby does. There were things about myself that I felt very self conscious about, and um, in, in in Ready or Not, you know, by that time Darby has come to accept her stutter, and she's not embarrassed about it because she just understands that it's how she is. Um, but but that you know there were I was always embarrassed when I was a kid about my freckles. You know, I don't know if you can see them very well on here, and I don't yeah. have them as as when I was a little kid, I had a lot of freckles. I people kids used to tease me about them and it didn't feel good at all. And I was really embarrassed about, about how I looked. So I, I, I used some of that in, in, in summer of luck and um, in ready or not, I was, I was feeling very frustrated about a lot of situations that I couldn't change. And um, which led me to sort of tell this story about what happens with Justin and, and, and Eugene and, and in his, his, his story in that book about how, how things, you know, the bad guy sometimes wins, or it seems like the bad guy sometimes wins. And and in in the book, you know, the idea of having to focus on the good people in the world, the people who can help you, the people who are, you know, uh, able to 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 care for their fellow their fellows, you know, and and help their fellows. Those are the people to concentrate on, and that was sort of the lesson I had to personally learn in my life, and and that was the way I told I chose to tell Justin's story. Why did you decide to have bigotry be a part of the storyline in Ready or Not? That's a really good question. You know, I think that when I was a kid growing up, I used to ask my mom, "Well, how did this happen, and how could that happen?" And you know, it was it was a different world back then, and and now it seems like a lot of that is coming back and it's, it's, you know, people are much more open with their, with their bigotry and their, and their, um, their hatred of other people and their, uh, uh, intolerance. And I just, you know, I mean, it's, it's upsetting to, to, I'm sure more than me, of course, but, you know, it was very upsetting to me. And I, I wanted, I wanted, you know, a book where kids would understand, you know, it's not right to make fun of someone's religion or, or say, say, call it a, you know, a, a, an epithet, if, if that word is the right word to use. Um, and, and I don't, you know, I wanted, I wanted to contribute to the conversation about that. I wanted kids to be able to read about a situation where something like that was happening. And, and that, um, you know, Justin goes through a process where he learns the right thing to do for him to stand up and, and he's not going to stop it completely, but he's going to contribute what he can. We've interviewed a number of authors who have had books banned, which means that many kids won't have access to the same books we do and possibly not see themselves represented in the books. Can you give us your thoughts on this? Yes, I, I absolutely can. I have a couple of writer friends whose books are, uh, whose con- the content in their books has caused them to be either considered for banning or or banned, and it's it's a tragic situation. I mean, there the, of all the, the kids' books that I that I've read today, you know, there there's something about you know, there's probably I mean, there was a book when I was a kid about a girl who had freckles, and she didn't like her freckles either, and that book really helped me understand and accept. She learned to accept herself, and and that really helped me. But I mean, whatever a kid's going through today, um, you know, there's a book for it, and and my thoughts about book banning are I don't like it. You know, I'm very opposed to it, as so many of us are. And um, the the positive thing though is that there are a lot of library systems in the country that are allowing kids 
you know, as long as their parents um, support them on this, you know, to get a library card and and download whatever books, you know, they they that have been banned that they can't buy at a bookstore, or they can't find at their own library. So that that I think is a very positive um, development. I also think that that you know, there's there's so many uh, there's so many large organizations and individuals who are are working very hard to to eradicate this this idea of banning books for kids. So I think I think that's a positive development in a very difficult situation. And and I applaud the two of you for for bringing this to uh, people's attention. What is your process when putting a book together? Do you decide the end before the middle or do you put it together in order? I do. I put it together in order. Now, a lot of writers don't. A lot of every, you know, you probably you talk to 50 writers, they would give you different answers to this question. But my process is um, I come up in, in all four books, including the one I'm writing now, I come up with a, an arc. So I, I in, in Summer of Luck, it was, well, it was, it was, you know, three kids struggle with communication and they have magical adventures that help them find their voices. That's kind of Summer of Luck. And Ready or Not, um, Justin is really struggling, you know, to learn how to, how to do what's right when everything's wrong. So that was my arc for, for, uh, ready or not. But in any case, um, uh, the way that I usually write is I will, I'll sketch out a chapter or, or a like, this is what happens in the chapter. And I can do anything from saying, using some words that will stay or just saying, the kid does this and then they do that. And then this happens. End of chapter. Like I, I'll just be that basic. And then I'll go back and I'll start, you know, what happens? What do I, I kind of try to envision it. I think of it very sort of cinematically and I look around and sometimes I can't get anything good that night. And then I'm like, Oh my gosh, I can't write it. <laughs> I'll never finish this book. I've done that in every single book I've written. And um, so I've done it enough where I know that that's not the truth. And all I have to do is move on to something else that day and come back to it the next day. So what writer has had the most influence on you? On my writing? Um, There, there are probably a few. There's a, a contemporary writer named Jess Redman. She wrote The Miraculous and she wrote Quintus, Quintessence. And she also wrote a book called uh, The Adventure is Real. I think that was her most recent book a couple of years ago. Um, and she her her writing is so beautifully crafted. And she does bring you inside the soul of the, the character she's writing about. And I love her books. I also, I read um, uh, Because of Wind dixie by Kate DiCamillo. Did you ever read that book? I, I love that book. And I love the way her writing, she she writes very simply, you know, she, but she tells a, a very deep story. And uh, I, 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 I think those two are, are the most, con the, the contemporary writers who, who've influenced me the most. But when I was a kid, you remember the book I mentioned about the kid, girl with freckles? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a book, it's from the decades, decades, decades ago, the last century. Um, it's a book called The Diamond in the Window. And it's a book by a woman named Jane Langton, who is no longer alive. Um, but she wrote a series of children's books in the 60s. And she also wrote a bunch of mysteries. And The Diamond in the Window, that story influenced me to write Summer of Luck. It was a kind of book that was about two kids, a brother and a sister. And they had some pretty magical adventures that helped them, again, sort of address their their issues and their self-esteem in the case of the girl. And I forgot what the boys issues were, but they ended up um, uh, going on a lot of magical adventures. And I've read that book over and over again <laughs> as a kid, as an adult. Um, I, I have it in my, I have a, a, an old copy of it on display somewhere where I can see it every day. And I, I think that way that book made me feel as a kid and as an adult, when I read it, I still get teared up at the end because it's a happy ending, but you know, the kind that kind of makes you cry anyway. And I, I, that's the kind of book that I wanted to write when I started Summer of Luck. So I think, you know, in terms of all time, uh, uh, that that's my my biggest influence. What advice do you have for young people who want to write? 
Great question. I I encourage you. I encourage you to write. You know, one I, I mean the the best advice I have is what you two already do and that is to read. Read a lot and and uh read all kinds of books and you know find the things you like, the things that bring you pleasure. You you don't have to read if if you you know there's books I've started and not have not finished because they didn't appeal to me, but don't let that stop you. Um you know, just keep reading. Another thing I do and that I would recommend is when you read a book, when you're reading a book, and this isn't like homework or anything, but but there's certain uh, sentences or, or things that I'll read in a book where I'm, um, uh, well, I'm like, wow, that's a great way to express that. So I write it down. You know, I have like, it's not a notebook, but it could be a notebook where I keep all these. I have, I have tons of pa- little pieces of paper in this folder. And um, it help, writing those things down helps me see how a writer expressed something. And so sometimes when I'm struggling with my own manuscript, sometimes I'll just go through all those th- papers and I'll read them. And it doesn't, it's not like I'm going to copy what they say. It's just that, that it helps me come up with my own ideas. And, uh, y- you know, I would also suggest for kids that want to write, um, uh, just jotting down ideas for a story. Um, there's also a lot of, um, places that you can uh, uh, get get writer prompts for kids. So I, I encourage people to write. And if you think you can't, then think again, because you can. You mentioned earlier that you you are almost done writing a book now. What can you tell us about that? This book is about a girl. There's no magic in this book. And it's about a girl uh, who's 12. And she is um, she's she's very self-conscious. She struggles with um, with binge eating, and she wants to be an actress. She wants to be in the drama class at school, but she's too afraid, or she's worried about people making comments about her, her looks. And um, but she finds a way to conquer her fears. She ends up taking a drama class, and she ends up getting therapy and some help for her for everything that she's struggling with. And um, I won't tell you the ending, but it is a happy ending. (laughs) Finally, it's time for Turbo 10. 10 rapid fire questions. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Number one, what is your favorite phrase to use? Awesome. (laughs) Number two, what is one subject you would love to learn more about? These are hard. (laughs) Um... I wish I could paint. Number three, what is your go-to snack food? Diet Dr. Pepper. Mm. Number four, what is your favorite gr- book growing up? Uh, growing up, the, now I'm dating myself because these books are really decades and decades old, but I um, I love the uh, Sydney Taylor's All of a Kind Family books. And um, and just to keep it a little current, I didn't read the Harry Potter books until I was an adult, but I, I absolutely adore the first book, especially. Number five, if you could teleport somewhere right now, where would you go? Oh, I'd go to Paris. <laughs> Same. Number six, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? I'd love to fly. Number seven, what was your favorite cartoon as a kid? The Flintstones. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> it's Number pretty timeless. Nine. Number eight. What's your favorite rainy day activity? I love to read. Curl up with a good book and read. <laughs> Number nine. If you could have any three dinner guests, who would they be? Oh, I love that question. Um, Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt. My dad. Number 10, what was the best piece of advice you were ever given? There's no age limit to my dreams. I became a writer when I was a lot older in life than most people um, start a new career. And um, when I read that, you know, I, I was getting discouraged. Am I too old? Am I going to make it? Am I going to get my book published? You know, it took many years to get a book published, my, my uh, summer of luck. And, um, and like I said, publishing is very slow. But when I read that, and a writer said that there's no age limit to my dreams. And it's true. And as long as I believe that, you know, I'm good. You did wonderfully. Thank you so much for doing that.
And thank you so much for spending your time with us. We can't wait to read your future books. Thank you, Abigail and Claire. This was really fun. I really enjoyed talking with you.